Hello everyone, so today we will discuss reading as a physiological process. These are the learning outcomes for this lesson. Now let's discuss some facts about reading. Reading involves both an organic or physiological process and a mental or cognitive process. But it is difficult to put a demarcation line between these two processes as they overlap since the mind controls all the human activities. Thus, some reading experts simply refer to this process as being neurophysiological in nature. So reading is a complex thing or a complex process. It requires both our physiological aspects and at the same time our mental aspects. Number two, in the physiological process, the most basic step is for the eyes to see, identify, and recognize the printed words or images. That could be an illustration, a diagram, or a picture. So that is the most basic step. And the light patterns that we have seen from these printed symbols will hit the foveal areas or closely packed sensory cells of the retina. So it looks like this. So this is our eye. So when when we read something or when we take a look on something, so the light patterns from those printed symbols will hit the foveal areas of our eye. Number four, in turn, this induces chemical changes that create patterns of nerve currents into the optic nerve fiber. So after um, release or after receiving the signals to our foveal areas, the, then it will now go to our optic nerve fiber. So it will create some chemical changes. So just like what you see here in the picture, after taking a look on the apple or on the yeah on the picture on an image of an apple, so it will reach our foveal areas and now it will induce chemical change into our optic nerve. And the fifth one, then these currents travel to a center in the midbrain. The sixth one, the stage of reading revolves around the ability to identify and recognize words, which are the smallest unit of visual identification and meaningful recognition. But the act of reading does not take place if the letters are perceived in isolation. So it's not enough that um, we can just recognize the letters in isolation, but we have to identify and recognize words. So for us to be able to say that we can um, read something and we can get some meanings up, um, on the words that we have read. Finally, using the currents that travel to the midbrain, the cerebral cortex interprets the, the symbols with the help of traces of the memory store of past experiences, also by associations that enable the reader to perceive the meaning of the word. So after um, the currents travel to our midbrain, so now it will process the information to the cerebral cor cortex. So in this case, we can now relate our previous experience to the images that we have seen and by that we can perceive the meaning of the word or of the image that we have read from the text or from the material. Studies also show some eye movements in reading with the eye perceiving and pausing on the printed material that could be horizontally from left to right and top to bottom for the Westerner or right to left and bottom to top for Asians such as the Chinese. So we have different eye movements when reading a text. 
scientific experiments have also shown that there are several eye movements. So the first eye movement is called fixation or the eye stopping or getting fixated on the word or words. The duration of fixation is the length of time the eyes has to pause. Most readers take four eye pauses per second while poor readers need more time to pause in order to see with accuracy. So when we read something or when we read a text and then we get or we stopped to a particular word because we want to check or recheck how to say it or how to read it. So that is fixation. So the length of time is um, the duration or the length of time that our eyes has to pause is the duration of the fixation. So for good readers, we take about four eye pauses per second, but for poor readers, they need more time to pause because they have to check further for accuracy. The next one is called interfixation or the eyes moving from stopping point to the other. So that could be horizontally from left to right or upcoming down under. So that is interfixation. On the other hand, we also have what we call return sweeps with the eyes swinging back from the end line. Okay, so that's from the end line to the beginning of the next line. We call that return sweeps. And the fourth one, the short quick hop and jump movements that's called saccades. And this is only done by literate people to move ahead on the line of a print. So it, for example, especially if we are scanning for information, so we just um, quick hop or jump from one text to the other. So that is saccades. We also have what we call regressions or backward right to left movement in case there is a need to double check what is being read. So this is where a reader tends to go back because he or she wants to double check something. And the last one, we have span of recognition or the eyes recognition of a group of words. It is believed that readers can add to their reading ability by widening the span of recognitions by means of chunking of phrases if focus on the total word pattern. As the span widens, fixation decreases resulting in increased speed in reading. So when we read, um, it's good that we have or that we we have the ability to recognize a particular phrase. So we stop in reading a particular phrase rather than reading it in isolation or word by word. So if our span widens, of course, fixation will be decreased and that will result to a more speedy type of reading. So to reflect, one reads ideas, not words. The habit of reading decreases the work of word deciphering, resulting in an ease in perceiving meaning, relationship, and messages of printed materials. So if we are already um, good in reading, it will be easier for us to give meaning to whatever text we have read. So of course, a constant practice or a habit of reading could really help us to improve our reading skills. Right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for listening.